Hey, how's it going, man? Hi, Fasanos. Fasid's born. No, man, no, hold on, man. I, I hate to tell you this, but there's no Satan at all involved in the new Akrakog album. None? None. Welcome back to Heavy Meta. My name is David. I'm Eric. And today we're going to be talking to you a little bit about Acre Tchotchke. Uh, they're a progressive black and death metal group from the United Kingdom. Uh, they've had a plethora of real bangers, slappers, uh, just some, some real grimy ass cuts over the years. Uh, words that go unspoken, deeds that go undone. One of the greatest progressive death metal albums of all time. Uh, Antichrist didn't really live up to that. That was the one that came out two years later. Uh, that one just, just felt a little, uh, it just felt just more progressive, but it really lacked the burl, the meatiness, just the, the raw aggression, the, the, the vile, just hatred kind of nature that they've always done so well on their previous releases. It just felt like a fall off. So right after that, the band went on break. They really needed to rethink their priorities, really get their shit together. Really get their shit together. And, uh... And now we're back, all these years later, 2007 to 2017, it's been a 10-year hiatus. Everybody's been waiting. They've been doing the festival circuits, they've really been getting the grind in, really spreading the Satan to everybody involved, having a good time. And uh, so where does that leave the newest CD, uh, Renaissance and Extremists? Well, we're going to get right down to it. So coming back from a 10-year hiatus is hard for any band. Seasoned bands, newer bands, any musical project is going to have a hard time coming back and meeting all the expectations that people have for them. Will they be sloppy? Will they try and go in an entirely new direction? Who's to say? Who's yeah. to say? Especially uh -huh. a band like Ackercock where they could go any which way. I'm not super familiar with anything other than words unspoken, deeds undone. But from what David was telling me, Antichrist was a bit of a letdown, it was uh, more mellow. So I was interested to see where this would go, and for the most part, it's pretty good. Uh, my complaints are few and far in between. I would say the worst part of the album, maybe the, the vocals? Uh, the clean singing is a little rough and uh, at times a bit cheesy. At times I feel like Jason Mandonza is trying to be a little too emotive, trying to be a little too brooding and gothy, and it comes off a little cheesy. It's not a big deal. There is a lot of clean singing on this album, so yeah, it's a big issue, which I feel like if you're a fan of the band already, it won't be. And that may bother you. And the, the harsh vocals aren't particularly great. They're a little monotonous. I've always thought of that as a, a relatively minor issue as well. Right. So... Other than that, I don't have a lot of complaints. There's a lot of vocal variation, so if you don't like one style of vocals, you're going to get another style within 30, 40 seconds in the same song, so it's not really a big deal to me. How do you feel about it? Um, I feel like maybe the, the cleans are definitely an acquired taste. I don't think they're bad at all. They, they can get a little cringy on occasion. Kind of feels more like a gradual shift here between some of the like like very overtly satanic overtones of their older works and the more gothic ones on this one. There's definitely a lot less Satan here. And I don't know that that's really to the band's detriment. I think it's more of a maturation. There's really a lot of grainy and textured storytelling here and more philosophical content. And the vocals really do emote a lot. They really actually take this, this new tone and really run with it in a really new and advanced nature. They really do add a lot, in my opinion. But to somebody just jumping into their entire discography, I could see somebody really thinking that they're a little try-hard, they're a little weak in spots, but there's so much variation. There's so much going on here on the vocal front. I just, I have a really hard time complaining about them. I really do. No, I can't really bitch either. I actually like the throaty, yelled, almost punk-like vocals that are pretty much the most prevalent style throughout the album. Oh yeah, definitely. And yeah, it doesn't really drag the album at all down for me. Nope. One other thing that might be a small detriment to the album is it's not particularly aggressive. As I said earlier, I'm only really familiar with words unspoken, deeds go undone, and not Antichrist or any of the, really the early ones. I've listened to them here and there, but they don't mean much to me either way. Is The album is much more mild. 
it's not as aggressive. Like the most aggressive song in the album is the very first song, and then it just kind of you know slowly slowly gets more and more emotional, culminating with the final track. Uh, would you like to talk more about the final track? Yeah, yeah, I'll get a little into it. See, the reason that I hated Antichrist was because it felt, number one, really flattened out. The production just didn't lend itself really well. They've always kind of had a really rough production style. But this album was much more progressive in nature and tone. And the problem is, is that when you don't balance that out with their raw and more aggressive nature. It just leaves the ratio really awkward, haphazard. Their songwriting just isn't as strong. I feel like they've always had a really good grasp on the back and forth, back and forth between the soft and powerful, soft and powerful kind of uh, instrumentals. But I, I felt like Antichrist really only did one side of that and it didn't really do it all that well. This final cut on here, a particularly cold September, it just feels like Antichrist. It feels like all the things that I didn't really enjoy about that album. And even a really soothing saxophone solo can't really redeem it. Because then it just kind of fades out after uh, a relatively decent solo, but I, I just can't stand fade-outs, especially when they're just kind of lazily implemented like this. And the fact that the song itself just kind of feels really awkwardly constructed. Maybe it's just the fact that they're trying to go more outside of the box, experiment more with their sounds on here, but it doesn't really bring things full circle. As a final track and a closer to the CD, uh, as opposed to everything which felt a little raw or more aggressive, it felt more like a return to their roots, more of that words that go unspoken kind of vibe, this last track really didn't speak to the album's nature. There's really just no full circle kind of close here, and that's really disappointing. I, I just feel like at the end of the day they didn't really learn anything. Like, they, they made a really great, phenomenal album through and through and through, and just kind of ended it on a more disappointing note. It's not a bad song. I like that they're still pushing themselves in really strange trajectories, but it just didn't pan out this one time. Yeah, I have to agree. It's yeah. a little bit boring, and it just the album kind of peters out, which is a little bit disappointing because every single other song every single other is track. fantastic. Yeah. So all in all, the gripes we have are relatively minor. It's there's not really anything that makes you go, well, you know, this part sucks. This is terrible. I want to listen to something else other than the last track for us. But what really makes this album so good, it for me, is its consistency. It's I may even say it's a little more consistent than Words Unspoken for me, which it, I, I really like that album, and the best songs on there for me are a little bit better than the best songs on here for me. Yeah. Other than the last track, there wasn't a single moment where I wanted to hit the skip button or That's do, true. listen to anything else or go back to Words Unspoken like I sometimes do when I'm listening to a new release by a band I like. Yeah. There's none of that. It was new Ackercock. It was familiar. It did revisit some old territory, but... The consistency just brought it all together for me. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, it's only really 53 minutes, and uh, it does feel really concise, though. Despite the fact that it's a little shy of an hour, there is so much going on, so much variation, uh, so much expanse uh, from one track to the next. Everything feels like it, it just really clips along. There's, there's just a lot of uh, different tones. There's a lot of different progressions and time signature changes. All these different vocal changes. All these different acoustic to heavy. Uh, there's black metal riffs. There's death metal riffs. There's some straight up like 90s death, uh, like Florida death metal riffs in here, as well as some cold-ass Norwegian black metal screams and shrill tremolo. There's just so much packed into this album. From beginning to the end, you just get so many different elements, so many wildly different elements that are seamlessly integrated here. And that's so impressive that a band that can come back after 10 years of being gone and putting out an album that maybe is one of their worst albums. They can come back and do something just this incredible. I'm really truly astounded at how good this album is. It's probably one of the best albums of the year and I didn't expect that out of them. Look at the more recent Decrepit Birth CD that just came out. That CD was good but it, you could tell that they'd been gone for a while. This album could have dropped two years after Antichrist and I would have totally believed it. I would have been totally okay with it. I would have said, hey, this is much better than Antichrist. This isn't shit. And that's, that's a great compliment for a band like this and an album like this ten years out. As far as progression goes between Antichrist and this album, even any of their older releases, actually one of the biggest positives that I can give this album, and actually their guitarist as well, is the guitar solos. 
Um, but Eric, did you want to touch on that? I know you felt pretty strongly about it. Yeah, I'm not sure which of their two guitarists play the solos, who plays rhythm, who plays lead, but I really, really enjoy the solos on this album. There's a lot of finger tapping, they're very neoclassically influenced in parts. Oh yeah. And almost every song has one, and every time I started a new song, I was waiting, what are they going to do? Yeah. Are we going to have another badass solo? And sure enough, here they came. So for an album in the black death metal vein, of course they have the prog elements. Right. I'm happy to see solos that aren't dissonant noise. Yeah, they're more traditional. They're more traditional. There's a lot of tapping. Like, the guitarists sure know what they're doing. Like, they can run the scales and all that. And the solos are just absolutely phenomenal, and I have to give them props on that aspect, especially. Oh, yeah, definitely. The sweeps, all the just, just various elements going throughout all the different solos. I don't even remember any of their old albums really having anything of that nature. Antichrist, I... I honestly don't remember anything from. But words that go unspoken, like, I I don't remember any of them being that distinct, that signature. And this album has a lot of really novel and unique solos throughout. Almost every song has something to gain, something to offer. We should probably give this thing a rating because we've raved about it enough. It's phenomenal, as we've both already talked about, but let's get into the ratings because who gives a shit about anything else? So just skip to the ending and, and get your ratings out of the way and go about your life. Uh, Eric, what would you give an album like this? I think I would have to give it a 9, personally. It's so impressive that they can come back after all that time and just, just wipe all the cobwebs and dust off of themselves and just put out something so strong would arguably may be the best album of their career. Yeah. That's really impressive to me, and I just really, really hope we get another album or two out of this. I know I might be being greedy asking for another one, yeah. considering how the band's gone, but I really am excited to see what else they can come up with, if anything. Right. I totally agree with that. A 9 is a perfect score for this. It's one of the best metal releases of the year by a long shot. It hasn't been a particularly great year for metal. There have been some CDs here and there, that Veninum CD that came out. That was really good, and there's been some little scrapes here and there. The new aseptic flesh is tolerable, but this one really takes the cake. It's really right up there with some of the best releases of the year. It's got tons of variation. It's actually produced well. We didn't really touch on that, but it's it's actually produced pretty well. And I, I think that actually lends itself really well to some of the other elements on the CD. And overall, I don't have anything to complain about here. I, I want to complain so hard. I complain about everything all the fucking time. And I, I can't find anything to complain about, and that disappoints me on a really basic level. But it makes me so happy that this band can come back and make something this potent in the metal landscape of 2017. So, bravo to them. Round of applause. You did it, fam. Yeah, good for you. Started at the bottom, now we're Satanless.